so now we've successfully made um, both a, uh, a believable <laughs> outdoor uh, zone, uh, kind of psychedelic fantasy land, and um, also uh, the beginnings of a more architectural or potentially indoor zone. Um, the indoor zone uh, we could flesh out with further creation of um, 3D object cubes, and each of these cubes I would usually reset the transform and then start thinking about like, well, if this one's going to be a wall, maybe I need it 10 in this direction, 10 in that direction. And now I'm able to start building um, a structure here. And uh, I can either control C, control V, or just control D to duplicate and start building um, a rudimentary sort of like level design. Um, if I want to rotate something, I can rotate it, uh, build out my, my structure here, and um, maybe one more for a roof, and we'll have it open on one side. I think I'm going to give this one an angle, actually. Maybe I'll change this one, move it over here. So you can see it's kind of fun to just iterate and build. Um, even with basic uh, geometric shapes, you can start to get something that feels um, sort of architectural. And then um, there are, of course, other uh, 3D objects that you can make. Um, maybe I'll throw in a couple of cylinders and have them play for um, for like ruined columns. This is what I was doing in my uh, in my example. So maybe ten is too tall for something like that. I want it five, and I'll um, sort of stick these into the landscape. Maybe give them a little bit of an angle on uh, on yeah. Maybe it'll be the x-axis. Give it a tip, sort of like a fallen over ancient column. Um, and then I'm starting to build uh, my, my world. And then last thing I want to make you aware of um, as we look at this is um, if we want to change the default color of one of these uh, 3D meshes, the cubes or the cylinders or anything like that, we'll make what Unity calls a material. Um, so once again, I'm going to encourage you to create a folder because there'll be more than one material. We might as well organize them. So we're going to make a folder called materials and inside materials, I'm going to right click and create a material. Um, so this material, I'll give it a name. Maybe I'll call it um, brown mat. Um, and I'm putting mat in there so that as I start to accrue lots of files, I won't be surprised when I see that this is, this is a material. Um, so the way a material works is it has an albedo, which is the name for color. Um, so I'm going to try a sort of, uh, mid brown and, um, that'll work for me. And then you can put a material directly onto an object just by drag and drop. Um, and then it'll show up as a component in that object. And if we were to change this material, um, like by making it more metallic or less smooth or whatever, um, it's going to change every instance of that material. So if the whole house goes brown on the outside, maybe with a white floor, Nah, brown floor. We'll leave the column be the thing that's white. Um, so now each of these objects has that brown material. And if we were to later change it and say it's a green material now, all of the instances of that material would change in our world. The other thing that you can do with the albedo is that instead of just a solid color, you can um, put a texture image. Um, so if we go over not in here, because if you click and then click into another folder, you will lose the inspector information you were trying to look at. But if you make sure your brown material is selected and leave it there, and then you go over here 
and choose um, our textures folder, we could make um, this tile texture be our albedo. And you drop it in here to the left of the word albedo. And now we have a tile texture and an albedo that is brown. Um, so if we wanted uh, this to just be the, pic the way the picture is, this albedo should be white. Um, but maybe we don't. Maybe we want a brown colored tile. And then you might think, okay, well, the tile's huge. That's no good. But we've already learned how we can make adjustments, right? So I'm going to shrink. Um, or what do I want to do? Maybe the tiling should be bigger. Yeah, in this case, we need to raise the number. And it's making the, um, the tile smaller. And uh, so we can even make offset changes to this if we wanted to. Um, and that's, uh, that's how you might use textures on, um, on a three-dimensional object using materials. One other cool aspect of using textures on materials that I want to make you aware of is the idea of the normal map. So a normal map um, is a, an image file, uh, usually that's sort of like purple and pink and aqua, um, that you can see an example of down here. <laughs> um, and this is sort of height information um, that can be used to kind of fake um, height to your texture. So if we zoom in real close um, to our tile texture right now, you'll notice that it, it really just looks like a picture, like a JPEG um, sort of tiled on, on a square, on a cube because that's what it is, you know, it's just a JPEG. Um, but uh, in the real world, even a cartoony realistic world, you would want there to be kind of like a, a height differential between the, the mortar and the bricks or the mortar and the tile. Um, now, uh, you could imagine individually 3D modeling every single tile, but that would be enormously inefficient in terms of um, how the computer runs the software. You know, it would be like uh, super slow once you tried to, to model all that. Um, so that's what normal maps are for. They can sort of fake some height information without actually having to um, model all of it. So if you have a... Um, um, texture that has a normal map image, it's as simple as dragging the normal map into the normal map um, square and <laughs> next to the word normal map under your materials um, inspector. And now, if we zoom in a little closer, you can see there's been a major change. It, it looks, you know, until you get too close and then it looks a little fakey, but it looks like all of these tiles now have some height information to them and the mortar area looks like it goes down a little bit. Um, and uh, any light that plays across them sort of respects those, um, those heights as well. Uh, so this is a very powerful tool for a sense of um, realism and believability. Um, so you might ask, how do I get a normal map? Um, if you are using the Unity Asset Store to download texture packs, um, which is one source of textures, a lot of them come with a normal map. And so you would simply put uh, the normal map that they come with into the normal map um, uh, slot. Some of them even come with um, extra, where it's like they have a metallic uh, image that's like certain parts of this texture are metallic and certain aren't. Um, they might have an occlusion map, which is like a fancy word for some parts get blocked, um, some parts block light, and some parts don't. Um, so uh, you can slot these images in. They'll usually be labeled like underscore, you know, this is tile, this is tile underscore normal. Um, so you know how to line them up correctly. Um, but if you're making your own textures, which I will show you how to do in another tutorial, uh, there are some tools available to make um, normal maps for your textures. So now that you know how to create um, some geometric shapes, uh, some landscapes, paint terrain textures onto those landscapes, and apply colored materials to your objects, um, you should 
go have fun. <laughs> Try making a world um, with these basics and, uh, and see what you can do with it.